Train to Busan. So Train to Busan is a South Korean horror film. It's a zombie apocalypse film that takes place on a train. It was trending when it came to Netflix last summer and a lot of people, you, people I know in real life, you were all like, dude, you gotta watch this movie because it's awesome. And I was like, wait, October's coming up. I'm gonna save that review for October because you know, sounds like a Halloween movie. You need Halloween movies. And obviously my grab bag for horror movies isn't decades old. And now this review is not gonna get one third the views it would have gotten had I reviewed it last summer when it was trending when it came to Netflix. Point is, Train to Busan is yet another two hour example of South Korean movies being amazing. Proof that them being amazing isn't a new thing, but it's new to some of us in America who haven't had a lot of exposure to them. So the plot of the movie is a simple one. There's this guy, he's a bit of an absentee father, he's a businessman, you kind of get the feeling he's a bit of a scumbag for the job he has. A few people without referencing Boiler Room are pretty much like, you're like one of the dudes from Boiler Room or Wall Street, you know, you get it. And this guy's daughter's like, hey, I want to visit my mom in Busan. So they take, yes, a train, to Busan. All the while you see the beginnings of what looks like a zombie apocalypse sprouting up in the background because this is not our first zombie apocalypse ride. Then zombie outbreak on the moving train and shit gets real. But as it's a zombie apocalypse movie, okay, how are the thrills, the chills, the zombie scares? Yeah, they're in here. It's actually not the most violent zombie movie I've seen. But I've noticed as I've gotten older, I don't always require violence. Some movies could benefit for having more violence, like I said in my Scream 3 review. That movie could have. But for a zombie apocalypse movie like this, I just, I need the anxiety, I need the intensity. When people die, I, I would like a bit of blood. This movie does have that, but it's not nearly as violent as, say, The Walking Dead. But it's also ten times more effective and intense than The Walking Dead, so there's that. And going into this movie, I was just, I was interested as to how they were going to keep a two hour movie going that just takes place on a train. But they absolutely do. 100% of it doesn't take place on a train. There is a momentary stop that they make, but the intensity is always there. First of all, when they're on the train, the zombies start sprouting. They're not just, you know, they're not Walking Dead slow ass zombies. They're the Zack Snyder's Dawn of the Dead. You know, they get bit, they die. They're quick to snap right back up and join the horde army of the zombie apocalypse. That claustrophobic feeling with fast moving zombies intense right out the gate. But what I love loved about this movie is that even when there's a moment where you feel like they could probably stop and breathe, you know they shouldn't. So none of you stop to breathe. They don't stop to breathe. You don't stop to breathe. There's no time. That fight or flight feeling of perpetual anxiety is always there. As Michael Knight from Knight Rider would say, keep your scanners peeled. You know you always have to. You have to have your head on a swivel. You're always on high alert and this movie reminds you why you always should be. And I love that in this movie. If we're going to reference Zack Snyder's Dawn of the Dead, again, which is one of those movies, it's one of those remake movies where it should have sucked, but didn't. I think it's a great zombie apocalypse movie. But there is a point in that movie where it looks like everyone just kind of gets comfortable. You know, they're sitting around the dinner table, they're talking about the jobs that they were best and worst at. You can call it the calm before the storm. But I just appreciate the fact that in Train to Busan, there's no calm, there's just storm. And part of what keeps that intensity alive is how attached I got to the characters. This movie has great character development, character growth. I mean, it's a train full of people that start getting whittled down and becoming zombie horde. The point is, among all the people on the train, of course, the movie's gonna be like, hey, here are your five or six people that we're actually gonna give character development to. Those are the ones you get attached to. And among those protagonists, I didn't want any of them to die. Yes, I'm saying that's kind of weird, right? Like, at least it is for me. In a zombie scenario like this, usually you'd be like, all right, of you six, you three, I want you to live. You three, looking forward to seeing how you die. Not that you're bad people, not that I want you to die, but I'm just saying, I'm. Looking forward to some death here. It's a zombie movie. When it comes to cinema, you can be down to enjoy all the good and the evil that a movie has to offer. You can root for the people to live and also root for the zombies to eat a few, you know, for entertainment. Just like you can root for Arthur Fleck to overcome his problems, hopefully, but also look forward to the fact that he's probably gonna shoot Murray in the face. You can look forward to all of it. It's good and evil, it's, it's cinema. But no, in Train to Busan, I really got attached to everybody because they start getting attached to each other. There is real growth there. Some characters didn't like each other at first, but they grow on each other. It's, it's like an RPG. They're your crew. You want them all to live. And that definitely adds to the intensity. Anytime anybody's in mortal peril, you feel it. You're like, get out of there. Nobody's expendable. Granted, there's, there's a character in here. It's like, I would love to see you die horribly, but he's not part of 
the crew. But that character is a great reflection of the possible future for our main character, which again, I, I love the nuance of that. And this movie is nuanced. It's a very layered film. It has a surprising amount of emotion, surprising amount of heart, and has a surprising amount to say about classism. That divide among the classes is what makes this movie so compelling. It's so naturally woven into the character development, character progression, and plot, which fundamentally just makes it feel better than how Hollywood does it. Hollywood has a message to give. It has all the nuance of a semi landing on your head. All of this is to say Train to Busan was epic. It's that good. Great characters that you get attached to, great thrills, great emotional tone. The attachment you get with the characters, that grabs you. The intensity you feel with the zombies, that takes you on the roller coaster. I haven't enjoyed a zombie story this much in many years. I walked away from Train to Busan thinking one word, awesome-tacular. <laughs> Hyped up movies don't always live up to the hype, but this one definitely deserved all the praise. You're looking for a sweet zombie movie, it's on Amazon Prime right now, go check it out. All right, so Train to Busan, have you seen it? What did you think about it? Or what's another piece of Korean cinema that is another two hour piece of proof that Korean cinema truly does kick ass? Whatever it is, whatever you think, comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like what you've seen here and you wanna see more, click right here to see more.